The Soviet-made Sukhoi Su-33, or Flanker D, is an all-weather carrier-based engine air superiority fighter that entered production before the collapse of the Soviet Union. Its unique design made it highly maneuverable and versatile for all sorts of aerobatics, including the hard-to-master Cobra maneuver. Also called dynamic deceleration, the Cobra occurs when an aircraft flying at moderate speed abruptly raises its nose to a past vertical altitude position, stalling the aircraft and making a full-body air brake before returning to a horizontal flying position. Footage taken aboard the Russian aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov shows how a lone Sukhoi Su-33 was tested to the extreme when it pulled off a demanding Cobra maneuver during a vertical aborted landing maneuver. As the Su-33 gracefully approaches the carrier's runway, it seems like something is wrong, and the pilot must make a decision at the last second, mere inches before its tail hits the ground. Pugachev's Cobra The Cobra Maneuver, also called a dynamic deceleration, has its origins in the last days of the Cold War. This unique aircraft movement was first implemented by Soviet test pilot Viktor Pugachev during the Le Bourget Paris Air Show of 1989. Pugachev was a seasoned pilot who graduated from the Yeysk Military Aviation School in 1970 and test pilot school in 1978. After earning his wings, Pugachev joined the Moscow Aviation Institute and graduated two years later. From then on, he was hired as a test pilot for Gromov Flight Research Institute and OKB Sukhoi, where he flew several Soviet aircraft, including the legendary Su-27 Flanker. After testing this aircraft for several years, Pugachev took his expertise to the 1989 Paris Air Show. While performing his usual tricks and flying at a moderate speed, Pugachev abruptly raised the nose of his Su-27 to the crowd's bewilderment. The witnesses initially thought that something had gone wrong, after violently raising the nose to a vertical position, the aircraft momentarily stalled mid-air, making a full-body air brake before adopting the Su-27's normal horizontal position. Pugachev's fighter did not lose any effective altitude during the whole maneuver, and the crowd cheered as they had never seen something like that before. Pugachev would later be awarded the gold medal of Hero of the Soviet Union after being credited with the first non-vertical takeoff and landing maneuver from the Russian aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov taking the credit. Despite Pugachev's success, some historians have suggested that he was not the first pilot to perform such a movement. Other Soviet pilots have stated that it was actually Soviet test pilot and cosmonaut Igor Volk who first performed the move in the early 1980s, when the USSR began developments on super maneuverability. The Swedes have also disputed the story and several Swedish pilots have stated that they've been practicing the maneuver as far back as the early 1960s. It is said that Swedish pilots who flew the SAA B-35 fighter discovered the maneuver as a way to recover from deep stalls, calling it the court parat, or short party maneuver. Other than the Swedes, the Syrians have also claimed the Cobra as their own. According to the Syrian Air Force, Mohammed Mansour, a novice MiG-21 pilot, who had trained in the USSR in the 1960s, discovered the Cobra maneuver while preparing to fight against the Israeli Air Force in 1967. Captured on camera. One captured example of the Cobra maneuver was performed by a Soviet Sukhoi Su-33 aboard Russia's Admiral Kuznetsov aircraft carrier. The Sukhoi Su-33, or Flanker D, was designed by Sukhoi and manufactured by Amur Aircraft Production Association as a direct derivative of the Su-27, the iconic Soviet fighter of the Cold War. Designed initially as the Soviet competitor of the American Grumman F-14 Tomcat and the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle, the Su-27 eventually required a significant upgrade by the late 1980s. The result was the Su-27K, which would eventually become the Su-33. The Su-33's reinforced structure and undercarriage were specially developed to withstand the great stress the fighter experiences upon landing and quick descents, while the flapperons and the leading edge slats are larger to provide high lift and maneuverability at low speeds. The 
footage shows how the warplane's airframe was tested to the limit when it pulled off the demanding maneuver during a vertical aborted landing maneuver. The video follows the Su-33 as it approaches the carrier's runway at moderate speed before backing away at the last second, aborting the maneuver mere inches before its tail hits the ground. Other Cobra Maneuvers Besides the traditional Cobra Maneuver popularized by Pugachev, there are also other derivatives. One of them is the Cobra Hover, in which the aircraft initiates with the traditional steps of the maneuver, but remains in vertical position for longer until it achieves the hover. The aircraft can then complete the movement as usual. In the Cobra Stall, the aircraft begins the maneuver, but never returns to its horizontal level flight position. Instead, it fully stalls out and applies thrust and rudder to change the warplane's direction. Another one is the Cobra Climb. As part of the maneuver, the aircraft initiates the standard action, but instead of remaining in altitude, it begins to climb vertically, leading to what may appear as a normal stall climb. However, there is a catch. During the maneuver, the stall climb occurs dramatically faster, and the maneuver ends with the vertical climb, after which the aircraft returns to standard flight level. The Cobra Maneuver in Combat The Cobra Maneuver is an example of post-stall maneuvering and can be described as an instant vertical pitch up from level flight without the climb, followed by a forward pitch to the previous level flight. If done correctly, the aircraft can stay in a straight flight during the whole maneuver without any rolls or yaws. To perform the maneuver, the pilot must fly at adequate high subsonic speeds. If the pilot attempts the Cobra at low rates, there's a chance he might not be able to complete the whole movement or return to level flight at the same speeds. On the other hand, if the pilot attempts the Cobra at excessive speeds, the maneuver will generate G-forces so high that it may result in loss of consciousness and airframe damage. For an aircraft to be able to perform the Cobra, it fundamentally needs aerodynamic instability in its core aerodynamics to make the fighter rapidly pitch up. In the case of the Su-27, the pilot has to first disengage the angle of attack limiter, which then clears the G-limiter. The pilot then needs to pull back hard until the fighter reaches an angle of attack of 90 to 120 degrees. Once the elevator is centered, the drag from the rear causes a torque that pitches the aircraft forward. It is also possible to employ a Cobra maneuver during a dogfight. An aircraft that is being pursued at highly close distances may abruptly slow itself down with the Cobra maneuver to the point that the enemy overshoots it, allowing the pursued aircraft to employ its weapons and take advantage. Still, given the inherent speed loss of the maneuver, staying on target and firing accurately require the use of thrust vectoring. Several analysts have claimed that the Cobra maneuver may also serve as a defense against radar, as the sudden velocity change may lead to some radars losing their lock on the target. Still, as of today, there has been no record of an aircraft doing the Cobra Maneuver during actual combat. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. And don't hesitate to check out our other Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting military and historical content. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. And stay tuned for more.